okay. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Um, okay, Flavia already knows a platform for volunteers for translators. That would be very, very helpful. Uh, so welcome to the European uh, Meeting of Humans. Uh, so it's our regular weekly meeting every Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, before this meeting, there was a, um, another meeting for the Italian activists that are currently uh, mobilized for the collection of signatures for the Bill of Popular Initiative on sortition-based citizen assemblies for the uh, climate emergency. And um, the purpose of tonight, uh, so first of all, a quick maybe update on on the latest uh, initiatives that we are carrying on. We launched last week um, the video that Andri helped us to put together with the voices of the Ukrainian citizens for uh, asking for becoming uh, EU, EU citizens uh, and also our instrument uh, to push forward as much as possible the request of accession of um, Ukraine to the European Union. Um, of course, because of our appeal, no, I'm joking, not because of our appeal, um, during the weekend, um, President von der Leyen visited uh, Ukraine and she made a very strong statement uh, on the fact that the accession, of, uh, the accession of Ukraine to the European Union might be a matter of uh, weeks rather than a matter of months, uh, sorry, of years which is usually the length of, of the process. Um, the fact that the commission is strongly in favor uh, of this is of course uh, quite important, although um, it's not quite an easy process. It's not only the commission that uh, plays a role in this, and of course the usual complexity of the European Council uh, forces us to think uh, forward on how to push the, the appeal and how to use that uh, as a civic instrument of uh, participation. Um, in terms of the initiative specifically on the appeal, um, I'm personally working on a presence of humans in Strasbourg on the weekend of the 9th of May, which is Europe Day, but this year is also the end of the conference on the future of Europe. And uh, there is a lot of pressure from European civil society to make sure that what has been seeded during the conference on the future of Europe in terms of uh, request of the citizens involved in the citizens' panels, but also the perspective uh, of reforms of the European Union um, goes ahead, uh, potentially aiming for a European uh, convention. Uh, from a political uh, perspective, of course, the results of the French elections uh, might be a turning point for this, uh, for this process. And as uh, a European citizens movement in the framework of the European civil society, of course, everything that we can do to uh, ensure that these new seeds of participatory democracy uh, that started from the Conference on the Future of Europe don't remain just an episode of European democracy, but become a methodology of European democracy. Mm, you have seen the convocation of this meeting, uh, and the title is Building a Sustainable Peace. Uh, why we gave this title and also how it connects with what I just mentioned. On one side, the future of Europe, the activation of new instruments of participatory democracy, such as uh, the sortition based citizen assemblies, and on the other side, the designing of a new European Union where Ukraine is the first of new member states uh, that uh, uh, enlarge the, the borders uh, of the European Union in itself, but also increase the role of uh, the European Union as a space for democracy and freedom for uh, new members. So tonight, uh, um, Lorenzo will uh, present uh, some of the proposals that other organizations, particularly the nonviolent movement, is advocating for, for building a peace process. Of course, the war is still ongoing very much, uh, but it's also right that we as people not died involved by the war and as European citizens we start to put our thoughts into what the um, 
peace process should uh, look like. Uh, and as a European movement with a focus on participatory democracy instruments, I also think that uh, starting to think politically about the, these uh, should also include uh, how we advocate and push for the adoption of instruments of participatory democracy, such as the sufficient-based citizen assemblies, uh, and how these instruments can really be uh, part of the democratic processes of the EU uh, and not only exercise as they are often uh, called. So the purpose of tonight is starting from the concrete um, things that Lorenzo will uh, uh, describe to us as coming from the pacifist and nonviolent movement. Uh, me and Marco are fully aware that uh, this is a definition that doesn't necessarily refer to, uh, to some of us in the perception of how the war should be approached. But on the other side, of course, the front of a sustainable peace process should also move its steps from what comes from uh, other organizations that operate in the space of a less armed world somehow. Um, so unless Marco wants to add something, I think for tonight, the real purpose is to have maybe starting from what is on the table of other organizations and have an exchange on uh, what's the position of humans on one side on this, uh, but also uh, which are the proposals that we have in our evaluation, both of the war in Ukraine uh, and the vision for a sustainable, free and democratic Europe uh, and how we could uh, uh, work on this. Uh, I just want to add one thing. Lorenzo shared the list of the 80 uh, members of humans so far. Um, I think, of course, the numbers are still minimal uh, compared to the mission that we have ahead. Uh, however, I want to mention that on Tuesday, I had a quick call with uh, one of our members, specifically Luke Lazarczyk. Uh, which is who is our first Polish member. Uh, and it was very important for me to speak with him to understand what brought a person that didn't know anything about humans to decide to become a member. Um, Luke was an attendee of the Humans Congress in Warsaw uh, in person. He came there because his professor Renata Norkiene was one of the speakers in the rule of law panel. And uh, he's a very shy guy, so I didn't want to interview him, but I asked him a few questions on why uh, he invested 72 euros in becoming a member of a nascent uh, European movement. Uh, and the three elements that he highlighted are very important for us when we think about the evolution of humans. First of all, the fact that we are a political movement, but not a political party. He said that he would have never invested in a membership in a political party, because in that case, our agenda would have been driven more by the need to gain seats in the parliament rather than the agenda in itself. Uh, second, the rule of law uh, and protection of democracy as a key pillar of humans as a movement. Of course, this was also the reason why we were in Poland, but. Uh, Kind of makes sense. And third, the approach that we had uh, to the war in Ukraine and the idea of Ukraine in the European Union. I'm not saying that Luke is uh, the target audience of humans, but on the other side, I think every opportunity that we have to ask ourselves and ask people that are around the movement what's intriguing about what we're building is also the foundation of the um, approach uh, dialogue and uh, communication that we set up for our movement uh, in terms of increasing the uh, potential reach of uh, what we do. And also I wanted to highlight that we have one Polish member, of course, our goal is have to have 1,000 or 1 million uh, Polish member of the movement in the long term. So I'd say maybe Marco, if you want also to add something, since we're sit so you can you have maybe some time and then Lorenzo for the introduction to the peace uh, uh, sustainable peace proposals thank you Virginia uh, thank you very much um, Marco was saying okay he's not uh, speaking now uh, okay so first of all
all apologize from uh, Mao Valpiana, president of the Nonviolent non Movement. He was invited today, uh, but thanks to the fact that Virginia just uh, uh, told us that next time uh, interpreters will be with us, he will come. The problem was his bad English, so he can't update us on the initiative uh, uh, that uh, the nonviolent movement and the network around it uh, is, is building. Um, and so I will try to update you, uh, but first one consideration, uh, I think it's very important to build this relationship with nonviolent non movement and all uh, the organization that are carrying initiative uh, on uh, peace um, and on the Ukrainian situation. It's a richness for us because we choose this initiative-based approach uh, on how to address the, the war situation. And I think uh, it's a smart move because uh, we have this energy and we have to see how we can be as much as possible effective on what we do. So thanks to Andri, thanks to all the young Ukrainian who have um, support the Ukraine Now appeal, uh, we have a powerful initiative to show the support of European civil society to the objective of Ukraine the EU. But of course, this is not enough. And we need to see uh, what else we can do. I think this is very uh, urgent uh, to see what uh, other organizations are, uh, are doing around a peace objective, um, what are they working for, uh, and see how we can connect to them, even in, if in this case we cannot be leader, it's important to stay in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, network. So in particular, the network of the um, nonviolent movement uh, with other uh, organizations such as uh, Giovanni Ventitresimo and others, um, they just had a mission, a uh, humanitarian mission in Leov um, on the first weekend of April, first, second, and third of April. And this was supposed to be not only a humanitarian um, mission at the beginning, um, but also uh, a way to, to build a relationship with ma local mayors and uh, representative of Ukrainian civil society organization to organize a conference, a civil society conference uh, on the objective of peace. So how the European civil society, Ukrainian and Russian civil society uh, could um, build up a conference on the objective for, uh, for peace, uh, a kind of uh, civil society negotiation, we could say. So this was the, the initial goal of the nonviolent movement. In this first, first mission to Leov, they didn't achieve to start that process because it was very complicated, especially with the mayor of Leov, to have this kind of dialogue. So it was just a humanitarian mission in the end. But now they are working on this. Uh, they are working on this and on this building a, a relationship with Ukrainian organization Russian organization and European organization to start this conference. And there is a potential date, which is the 1st of June, a date in which uh, probably in Brussels, they, want, they would like to hold the first meeting of this uh, uh, civil society conference. So uh, I cannot uh, update you more than this uh, because this is a, a work uh, ongoing. Uh, but the objective is to, to build this, uh, this discussion, see which proposals citizens are giving to achieve peace, citizens from different uh, European nations, Ukraine and Russia, once again. And uh, so this is the first uh, uh, step, the first uh, binary, we could say, on which um, the nonviolent movement is working on this civil society conference. And I think humans could play a role and bring proposal uh, if uh, these, uh, if such a conference will really take place. And the second thing is the uh, International Trade uh, Union uh, Confederation. It's another network of which the nonviolent movement is part of. I'm putting in the chat 
this next meeting that will be on the 21st of April, so exactly in one week. Uh, on, in this meeting, several organizations will discuss um, on uh, how to face emergencies today. So not only war and nuclear war, but pandemic and climate change. So how uh, politics should respond on to these challenges. It's a very broad uh, question for a webinar, uh, but I think it's uh, interesting to follow uh, what will uh, emerge from this discussion because uh, some um, proposals, particularly on, uh, on peace and disarmament, could emerge from this discussion. So uh, these two uh, main uh, network and initiative, the civil society conference on the one end and uh, the International Trade Union Confederation meeting uh, on peace and disarmament are the two uh, networks and uh, initiatives on which I think we could uh, be initially observer, but then when uh, things start, even take part uh, with, uh, with proposals. And so uh, this is what I know from Mao, and uh, he told me that he will come uh, very soon to update us directly on uh, the initiative uh, uh, he's working on. Thank you, Lorenzo. Also, because having dates always helps to shadow strategies. So we already know the 9th of May and the 14th with the mayor of uh, Strasbourg and his appointment in Brussels on the 1st of June. Uh, it's another date. So in between, we can imagine a lot of things. Uh, Marco Cappato, then Flavia Panzeri, yes. and then Roberto uh, Thank you, Virginia. So uh, what's the problem with the pacifist movement? or at least with the part of a, a non-violent and pacifist movement. Some of them call them non-violent, some of them call them pacifist. The problem with them is that some of them tend to be neutral, uh, tend to define as equivalent the war of aggression and the defense. I mean, I'm not explaining to you the difference <laughs> among these two things is, is, too, is too clear, but um, to some of them is not that clear. I just received, uh, uh, I don't know if, the, the, I, I, I think they are the one, and I just received an email and they, and, and they are talking about war of aggression and war of defense, but, but they are treating like the same thing. So, uh, uh, of course, I would say uh, we don't agree. Um, the very fact of proposing the adhesion of Ukraine in the European Union, it means to take side, to take part. I mean, we, we, so I think we should be very clear uh, on that point. So um, these two let's say forum or um, of discussion that Lorenzo presented to us, uh, I don't think we can immediately become a part of it. It's very important to observe, to discuss. Some of them are quite close to our position. Some of us are quite distant to our position. So I think we should not be, uh, in a way, involved in a, in a, in a political stance uh, which is treating the aggressor and the aggressed more or less in the same way. But it is important to keep an eye on what's going on because uh, uh, on the, especially on the long run, some of the proposals that are coming from the nonviolent or pacifist movement are interesting. Uh, I give you some example, as far as I know, the idea of having non-violence tools of resistance uh, or to use the weapons of information like or even uh, um, uh, hackers or uh, other non-violent techniques of resistance to, to violent powers. 
those things are very interesting to study. Um, another example is the peace corps, how the European Union could display peace corps to prevent a war. But of course, all these things uh, basically are not something that you can tell in Mariupol, where there are uh, hundreds of thousands of civilians who are uh, probably killed, or hundreds of thousands that are uh, forced to leave their home. And, uh, uh, and, and, and the only way of stopping this is uh, from a military point of view. There is no, uh, there is now that Russia is launching an assault to Donbass, uh, I don't think there is a, another way to contain them, uh, which is not the, the, the countering the, 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 the Russian army with uh, effective um, weapons and, 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 and defense. So uh, I think it's very important to, to have a dialogue of, with those pacifist networks to understand if there are practical solutions that can be helpful in the long run, but even in the short run, when they launched the idea of having a nonviolent march in Kiev one month ago to ask the ceasefire, well, uh, of course, if you go in a city which is under attack and you ask the ceasefire, this is not a neutral proposal because the ceasefire is what the attacked is asking, the aggressor is asking for a, for a ceasefire. The aggressor doesn't want to hear about a ceasefire. So there can be, uh, there can be nonviolent solution which are not neutral between the aggressor and the aggressor, but we have to be very, very careful um, in not being involved in political position that uh, could not be ours. So uh, let's open this dialogue. Uh, well, uh, I hope there will be uh, also other opportunity to have some of them uh, speaking to us uh, with the possibility of asking questions and so on. Uh, but I think going back to also to Virginia introduction that our priority now is to accelerate uh, with the uh, Ukrainian in the EU appeal. Um, I know that Lorenzo got in contact with some Ukrainians community in Naples. It would be very important if you are able, if we are able to, to, to touch base with uh, Ukrainian networks in Italy, all around Europe, all around the world, basically, because if the European Council is going to take a decision on June 23rd. And if the war is going on with this tragic uh, uh, pace, tragic, we need to be very quick in enlarging the basis, the citizens' basis of with, uh, what we are proposing now. So uh, very good to uh, open a dialogue with the nonviolent movement. Uh, operational priority for all of us, uh, activating networks for uh, the Ukraine in the EU appeal all around the world. Thanks. Thank you, Marco. Uh, Flavia Panseri, who wants to say something exactly on the Ukraine in the EU uh, talk. Yes, I hope to make sense because I'm exhausted today. I've had a five hour long hike up and down and so I'm not sure I'm thinking very straight. Before I go on to the EU, uh, sorry, Ukraine's accession to the EU, just one brief comment to, to what Marco has said and it, which sees me absolutely in agreement. There is obviously a difference between uh, self-defense and a war of aggression and self-defense at the individual level is by the way, something that every to my knowledge, every legal system that I am aware of recognizes you are attacked, you defend yourself. The same should apply to, to countries. And therefore, I think 
that to argue for uh, um, a ceasefire that that doesn't distinguish between who has been attacked and who is the aggressor is 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 really muddling the water and unfortunately we see it also only too often uh, at least on italian tv when we have people uh, claiming that the logical consequence is that ukraine should say okay here we are take us over and everything is fine which is an absolute denial of every every right based approach so um, clearly, I think it's it's important to recognize the right and the duty in a sense of self-defense. Coming to the e, uh, accession of Ukraine to the EU, I can see that there is a pressure building up to move fast. Fine. I have no problem with that. It certainly does further corner Putin and therefore has its own risk. But that is in the logic of things, and I'm not going to quibble about that. However, I think it's important to recognize that before all this started to happen, Ukraine was not a really okay country, let's say. There were issues of transparency, uh, of uh, addressing corruption, um, good governance, and so on, social approaches. And, and therefore, my concern is if now the EU starts moving at a fast speed to ensure accession, which at one level is clearly necessary, <clears throat> I'm worried that at another level, it may be a little bit less stringent in terms of what are the criteria that the country has to meet in, meet in terms of self-governance, transparency, and all these other things uh, in order to qualify for EU accession. And we've seen, and we are seeing with Hungary and Poland, that countries that have prima facie uh, taken into account all the European acquis in a way to introduce democratic systems, transparency and the like, um, have gone back. And we have no way to even start wondering, well, should you be in at all if this is your behavior? I'm thinking of Orban. I mean, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's a problematic thing for the EU to have a member uh, which takes this, the position that he's been taking. So while it's logic and perhaps inevitable that the process of considering Ukraine accession should be accelerated and therefore um, perhaps less stringent in its close monitoring of the things that have to be in place before the accession is granted, I think it will be very important to put in some uh, benchmarks and controls that would allow even after the accession takes place to, to see whether the country is going in the right direction or else we may risk finding ourselves in a situation like the one we have now with Hungary where we have a member inside the house whose positions and way of thinking, at least in terms of the uh, <clears throat> political representatives that it has given itself, are not in line with the values of the EU. So I think this is a balancing act that, in my view, is important not to lose track on, of, and I don't know what the EU will do about that. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Flavia. Um, it's an important angle for the discussion of tonight. I also want to mention that I'm in contact with some of the participants of the rule of law session of our Congress in Warsaw uh, to imagine that the first human's assembly uh, in June after the Congress can be in Warsaw again and may be connected to some initiatives on the rule of law in Poland. Uh, because of course, I think the other angle of what you are saying is the role of Poland in itself uh, in the 
war in Ukraine and the role of the European Union and this element of the protection of the rule of law, it's very easy to be uh, undermined <laughs> by the current uh, circumstances whilst uh, uh, it's, um, it needs to be strengthened as potentially the expansion work. So this is another line of action for humans that I think to keep in mind as we have our debate tonight. Uh, before giving the floor to Robert Mancus, I also want to welcome you, Wayne, from the Wine, from the Right to Die Europe uh, um, organization that is with us, uh, even if we're speaking about, I mean, other forms of, uh, I mean, very glad to have you. And the former senator, Luis Alberto Regliana, uh, very happy to have you with us in the, in the meeting. <laughs> Um, in the Humans Weekly meeting that tonight is focused on the construction of a sustainable peace starting from the accession of Ukraine to the European Union. So uh, Roberto Mancuso, Humans member and board member of, uh, of Humans. So Roberto, the floor is yours. Thanks, Virginia. My English is not good, so I will read my speech. I wrote in Italian and, and then translated in English. At the beginning of my speech, I can only thank Marco Cappato and Virginia Fiume, our presidents, for choosing me among the members of the Administrative Board of Humans. We have come a long way in, in these three years, and with the Warsaw Congress, we have undoubtedly grown, both from an organizational and a political point of view. What might what might have seemed a vanity, a chimera, the establishment of a pan-European movement of popular initiative is taking shape in a reality that uh, is still in the pipeline, permanent, permanently and methodologically under construction, but which does not therefore navigate on site. The roads that we have traced and traveled up to now those that we are tracing and traveling, and centrally, those that we will trace and we will go in the right direction, direction, at least for the famous millimeter to the day, because they are guided by a pragmatic, almost scientific method, which continuously feeds knowledge, knowledge, discussion, and political initiatives. Secondly, I want to congratulate and best wishes to the other members who have been chosen for the Humans Board. I'm sure that uh, we will all be able to give the right contribution to the Pan-European Political Initiative and be as of support to the political orientation activity set and carried out, carried out by our presidents. Having said all this, I want to direct my intervention towards what is closest to my heart, the freedom and the liberation of the Ukrainian people from the aggressor Putin. The hours we are living are dramatic and distressing. The response of the international community to the heinous war crimes committed by Russian troops in Ukraine seem feeble and almost powerless. Economic sanctions and the dispatch of light weapons seem to me insufficient in relation to the extent of what is happening on Ukrainian soil. War crimes violence against men, women, and children, tried and witnessed are not facts for which a limited and partial reaction is sufficient. Instead, a very strong response is necessary in order not to fall back into the same mistakes that in the 20th century with the Munich Conference of 1938 were made by Chamberlain Daladier who recognized the dignity of political interlocutors to Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini, and, they, and that they reached an agreement or dictated or betrayal looking at it from the Czechoslovakian point of view, whereby sacrificing Czechoslovakia itself was worth a peace, which was then hoped to be lasting. So evidently, evidently it was not. It was not. The credibility recognized to the dictators of the time was a huge mistake that laid the foundation for further expansionist aims. Unfortunately, we tend not to know history or to forget it, but those who today speak of peace, peace, and peace 
or whoever attribute the responsibility for the war uh, we are experiencing a few uh, at a few hours from our home to the Americans or better Marco Tavaio said uh, yesterday on uh, TV this uh, fact or better to the AIMS expansionists and their shady business are out of history and reality and are only capable of babbling against the United States of America and the West in general. Also very boldly represented by Ursula von der Leyen, the response of the European Union manifests all the inadequacy and weakness of the treaties that regulate it, because very every response, every response, however high and noble, must pass through the Cowden of national states and mechanism unanimistic and obsolete, which respect to the 21st century we now live in. Perhaps I express a point of view that too many seems seem dangerous or crazy, but which, in my opinion, is adequate in order to remain under the yoke of Putin and nuclear blackmail. A military intervention by NATO is needed to put an end to the Russian invasion. It is necessary now, now, immediately, the gravity of the war crimes and human rights violations, violations committed in Ukraine is such that it cannot remain indifferent. If Putin allows himself to be conquered by Ukraine or some of its territories, Putin himself will soon want to expand his dictatorial rule beyond other borders, exactly as it was with the Southern Sudetenland and Hitler. We therefore do not need an international community that washing its costs with decisions like Chamberlain and Daladier is afraid of the Russian nuclear weapon that is putting blackmail, not the defense of human rights and fundamental freedoms. And instead, instead, it is very urgent to get uh, your hands dirty in the ongoing war to reduce the expansionist aims of the Russian dictator. I'm a non-violent, non and I believe in non-violence, so I'm not a pacifist. At the same time, at the same time, Ukraine sent into the European Union and also into North Atlantic Treaty Organization is fundamental for futures for future of peace, a true and lasting one. Finally, for the future of the European Union itself, the only possible future, it's very urgent to put end to the treaties that found it to build following the European Federalist dream of Ventotana the European Political Union, not just the economic and monetary one. If political European Union has to be, must be the European Union of citizens, not governments. This is why the birth of a pan-European human movement in Warsaw is truly visionary and the reforming choice for Europe. We must continue to the, on this path with all by fighting for the timely entry in, of Ukraine into the Union, but at the same time working for an immediate reform of the treaties that will finally be able to hand over to European citizens their sovereignty that supplants that sovereignty that is now only of governments. Humans is, humans must be, humans will be. I'm really very sorry for my English. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberto. Don't be sorry because also the effort of uh, expressing uh, your analysis, which is very historically grounded, I think it's uh, very precious and encourages all of us to participate in the debate. So thank you very much. And I already know that you will publish your speech on Human Sagora, so it stays. So thanks, thanks a lot. Um, whilst if everyone else wants to add something, I want to pick up on one point that Roberto mentioned, which is the need of the reforms of the European Union, starting from a European Convention, which of course is a goal that as a movement, we can't do nothing for. I mean, we are too small to, to do that, but um, I published here the program of the event that is gonna happen in 
Strasbourg uh, from the 4th to the 8th of May, organized by the different federalist movement in the European Union. The goal is to gather in Strasbourg a um, strong enough wave of citizens and civil society organizations exactly to call for a European convention. And uh, it's aimed to be a citizens event. So feel, consider all yourself invited. Of course, I'm gonna uh, be there and do what I can for connecting and doing what we usually do. But uh, I really want to share also because I have a good position being in Brussels and it's my role as, uh, as one of the two presidents of humans to build the bridge and show that there are these different ways of civil society and citizens organization that are urgently calling for the reforms that are needed to um, to ground the proposals that we make so i just wanted to to tell that there is a wave of uh, action for the call for the eu convention uh, as a follow-up of the conference on the future of europe uh, marco Capato. Two things about what uh, um, Flavia said and what Roberto said. Uh, first of all, to Flavia, uh, yes, of course. Um, what is the problem right now with the European Union? There is not a strong mechanism for the enforcement of rule of law and democracy within the European Union. So the more we open, the European Union, the, the more we need a strong uh, tool and instrument to have democracy and rule of law respected. So uh, when we ask a EU enlargement, not only to Ukraine, but also to, to Southern East Europe, the stronger we need, uh, the stronger mechanism we need for the, to the enforcement of democracy and rule of law. So uh, we don't have to underestimate the importance, but this should not become, I think, a good reason to remain in the older club, but to uh, have a club, because even Italy has um, a systematic violation of um, legality, democracy and rule of law, for example, for its condition of prisons and the justice system, for example. So I think we are totally on the same page with that. We need enlargement and we need in parallel a, a reinforcement and strengthening of tools for democracy and rule of law. Um, to Roberto, um, I totally share what you said and also the history, the background and the definition and so on. And I totally share the difference and sometimes even the opposition among nonviolence and pacifism. At the same time, I think we need to keep the dialogue open because uh, uh, if a pacifist is not an ideological one, but uh, is a pacifist believing, for example, in the need of decreasing worldwide um, the, 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 the expenditure, the money spent for weapons. Uh, I think this is a good solution. Even a nonviolent could agree if, if we reach international agreement, for example, for the containment of nuclear weapons or conventional weapons, uh, this would be a good result, both for a nonviolent and for a pacifist. So uh, exactly for the, the, for the reason why I agree with your definition and, and even distinction, at the same time, I think it is very important to keep the dialogue open because there are some um uh, goals that we could even share with a, at least a part of the pacifist movement so um I, I think this is why i think that these two occasions that lorenzo explained not as member directly but as observers 
would be a good occasion of dialogue with all this uh, world environment and networks and and so on. And then we, we and then and then we see maybe we will propose to them, uh, for example, uh, to to sign for the proposal of Ukraine and the European Union. Some of them could uh, accept, some of them would not accept. But this, of course, is not a problem. Thank you, Marco. I'm trying to look at the, okay, there is one and that I cannot associate to anyone. So oh, there's no more. Hand. Okay, <laughs> does anyone want to add something? And also, Andre, I always call you but because you are the Ukrainian voice and to be honest, uh, the more legitimate one to, uh, to also express uh, both your own take, but also maybe the perception in Ukraine on what we are discussing here tonight. So the floor is yours. So, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello to everybody. Thank you, thank you. And also I want to thank you for the like promotion of the video. I also share with the students who like take part in this video. Uh, we also share it in Instagram. And also we have a lot of uh, mails and uh, messages from the other people in Ukraine who said like thank you for for humans for for the students that uh, we are working on this integration and also i want to add about the like neutral position of uh, somebody now it's it's hard now to be like like have a neutral position because we also see situation in mariupol and very scary situation in bucha in uh, uh, in uh, in a, in a gusto mail. So after after this, maybe a country will change uh, their like position because we also see like it's a like a genocide in Europe in in Ukraine, and also it's uh, no no it's hard to say because uh, we all see these pictures, we all see like like the situation, like interview with people and. Uh, I want to add that uh, maybe, maybe it will less like neutral position from the organization and also from the country. And uh, how they said the president uh, Zelensky that now we have like a, a circle of friends and another country. So it's like one of the positions that we can like share that now it's more important to be friends, to help like uh, with some humanitarian help with weapon and also situation with nuclearity weapons that we said about the uh, like country who have neutral position can be neutral with a weapon. It's not like one of the reason I think that Ukrainian are like agree because like it's it's a, it's a weapon and it's like uh, it's a hard weapon for 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 like for every country and. Uh, one of the reasons that Ukrainian I agree that it might it must be a dialogue. It must be a dialogue of the country and the organization and uh, like what we can see like uh, this uh, uh, this document that was given from the council to Ukrainian. It's very important step and uh, we we can see it that it's all organiz organ all all organization have done it for these documents because like we we like. Uh, show to the Europe Council and Europe Parliament that we want that Ukraine be in a Europe family. So maybe it's like also like big step from the all of, of the organization. And uh, maybe I can say just a thank you and I have like the information from the MISA also that about uh, their steps, uh, what they want to done it. And also they wanted like, uh, to ask that did you have a message maybe for the media or for somebody because we start to speak today about uh, to share with the Polish media and uh, they can give the mails uh, that we can send this information and also we can uh, give the mails of the government of the Warsaw and uh, mail for the president that, that we can like send to him information because like Chaskowski, it's very like my medial person and uh, he maybe can 
take a participation in this initiative and appeal. Also, we have uh, maybe three presidents from the Ukraine of the of the cities. Yes, one of the from the Lviv, one from the Ternopol, and also we have the mail from the president of Kiev. But in Kiev, maybe will be the trouble because like they have now a lot a lot to to do in Kiev and also like this uh, city like. Is maybe like in danger is more than another like in uh, uh, like like in Lviv in Ternopil. so maybe we can participate with Lviv and uh, Ternopil to speak with the president uh, to speak with the president of the city and yeah so we have, we have a lot a lot to do and also thank you for you much for this participation and working on this appeal so thank you Thank you, um, thank you, Andre. Uh, uh, Mark, you want to say something? Ah, okay. Um, so uh, I'm preparing with the activist from Strasbourg a document to present the initiative to the mayor of Strasbourg. Uh, hopefully she will have done the first draft uh, tomorrow and I have the weekend to work on that. So once we have a document, we have something for the mayor of, for those of you who don't know, Cherchowski is the mayor of Warsaw. And, uh, and for the Ukrainian males. And um, so ideally for the half of next week, we have something for the mayor side, Andre, that you can use also in Poland and Ukraine with the goal of doing something maybe either on the 9th of May to be launched, or maybe the mayor of Strasbourg launched it on the 9th of May, and then we could use uh, the other meetings of humans to see what strategy we can propose to the mayors. But that is ongoing. And now I'm going to put here in the chat the uh, English version of the press release that we used for your video, uh, so that maybe you can use it in Poland uh, and in Ukraine to launch the videos also, also there. In Italy, we were out on some of the major newspapers, like Repubblica, Alfa Tukut, like national newspaper. So I guess uh, it can work quite well also in, uh, um, in uh, Poland and Ukraine. So I'm going to give you the link here so that you have it. And for the mayor's documentation, uh, my goal is to send it to you. Uh, but it's good that you already had some conversations with uh, these that you mentioned and uh, it's very, very vicious. Uh, thanks a lot. Yes. I don't know if Marco, you were waving your hand because you want to say something. Uh, so Luis Alberto. Yes. Uh, thank you, Virginia. Thank you all for uh this opportunity to talk with you. And uh, first of all, the, my strong and complete uh, solidarity with the people of Ukraine, with Andri, he represents now this uh, brave uh, and courageous uh, people that are fighting against uh, against the Putin, let me say. I don't want to add uh, all the Russian people to this uh, crazy and uh, no, uh, nonsense uh, aggression uh, that we have to completely uh, hope to forget soon, but uh, it's a very difficult this this period. Well, just some comments uh, about the also the words from uh, Flavia and Roberto before uh, regarding the uh, the expansion the, uh, of the EU and the, the aggregation of uh, Ukraine to these 27 uh, countries that compose the EU. I think that if we follow the rules, uh, is uh, Ukraine should comply with the 35, uh, I think 34, 35 chapters of the, uh, the so-called acquis communitaire. Uh, and this takes time. So some, some countries are still working on this uh, since years. Uh, and think, uh, but now is a decision more and more political. Also, the big enlargement in the early 20s, uh, to, uh, sorry, the, the early 2000 year when there were seven countries joining in one time was also there is a political decision at the end. And in this case, also, I think uh, we have to uh, limit the, the, the request and the um, that uh, immediately uh, Ukraine has to comply. For sure, there is uh, something that in any case uh, the Ukrainian can do immediately. The, I think the parliament, because there are many, many laws that will be changed to guarantee at the end, I think uh, three major uh, topics. Uh, the respect 
of human rights. Of course, there will be some uh, lack of uh, compliance as uh, many countries has, uh, as uh, said also by Marco, that there are countries like Italy also that don't fully comply in all, but at least on paper, let me say on, on the law, this should be done. Uh, we have to guarantee, uh, this is one of the important uh, uh, goal of the of the European Union, the um, the free movement of workers and people, the free movement, the free market. Uh, we have only the, the goal is to have a European uh, single market, and uh, and mainly and this is difficult too. It's a political decision, and this is, is to have a, a liberal democracy. Uh, and then, well, the, 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 this is something that uh, we have to, to have in mind. I, I, having this in clear, I think uh, we have to speed up. I, I agree with, the, with the Ursula von der Leyen. We say it's summer, it should be a matter of weeks, not of years, of course, for, for the Ukrainian. But at the same time, I think we have to support the other countries that want to join for the same reason, because they are struggling, of course, they are having, of, some uh, uh, fund for this, the IPA funds are for this, but it's not, uh, uh, they want to join. I think this is, uh, this is the important point. Uh, specifically to, to, to Ukraine, I can tell you on a personal experience. Uh, I had, I, I, I never been in, in Ukraine, in my, but I was member of the Council of Europe and I participated when the, the, pre, the former president Poroshenko came to, to make a speech to the, the Council of Europe. It was at the end of 2014. And there was this discussion about the, uh, the agreement on Minsk at the end, this were signed. My regret, my thought at this time was that the Ukrainian and all the international community asked to uh, only France and Germany to support on the European side together with Belarus, together with Russia, of course, and Ukraine to sign this uh, Minsk agreement. There was no peacekeeping force in field. And so in the Donbass, the situation continued to going worse and worse. So if you have an agreement, you need a force that um, is there to allow, to attempt at least to, to, to respect the agreements. And this is what's not done in this case. And uh, at this period also, let me give a personal view. Um, we had a particularly important uh, person in the, as a high representative of, uh, uh, of Europe was uh, Mogherini, Federica Mogherini of Italy. And she was, uh, I appreciate a lot of her work. And for example, in the Iranian case uh, was thanks to her, uh, uh, strength and uh, effort that we had uh, in this period uh, the agreement with the, uh, about the nuclear with uh, with uh, uh, with Iran as the United States and all. Uh, I don't know if this the current uh, high representative have the same uh, standing, let me say, same capacity and uh, uh, and but uh, so but this time I said before the. Uh, European Union at the high at the high representative was not involved. It was a pity, was a, an error at the, at the end. Uh, but again, but mainly I think the point was that there was not uh, a peacekeeping forces. And in this case, there are many countries, European countries, including Italy, but not only. I think there are very strong experience of. I guess I say maybe Denmark, uh, uh, Netherlands that have experience of peacekeeping. So why I don't know why in this time there was no this uh, uh, this action. Uh, and finally, during this uh, speech of Poroshenko, I remember that he, he was uh, uh, proposing that uh, for Donbas a special status for this region. Uh, for example, give it the same. Um, the same status for the two languages, the Russian and Ukrainian, and giving some, um, well, some autonomy, like uh, many areas in Europe has a similar situation where there, is, there are uh, uh, minorities uh, that in this, in the minority in the country, but maybe majorities in this area. Uh, for in, sometimes now we, there is uh, the case of uh, is mentioned the case of uh, Alto Adige or uh, South Tyrol in Italy, where is they are a minority in Italy, of course, but they are maybe some is the majority inside this region. But thanks to the intelligence, the capacity of the 
politician of this time in Italy and in, in Austria, uh, there was a, a, an agreement that is working uh, as I think is, an, uh, is a worldwide example of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of community, uh, communities that are uh, uh, living together without uh, no more problems that in the past we had in Italy, in this region, in the, in the 50s, in the 60s of the last century. So I think it's in when I, I remember this word of Poroshenko because I, I thought it was a, a good idea to implement this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for many reasons, this was not uh, the case. And now uh, the situation with, uh, with Putin that uh, we don't know if he's uh, crazy, if a criminal or is both uh, together is really uh, is threatening the Europe. Uh, and also we have to um, consider that uh, Moldova and the Baltics are, could be the next. I, I don't think honestly uh, too much. I not, I'm not feeling about uh, uh, Finland and Sweden because they have no uh, Russian minorities inside, but uh, the Baltics for sure, big ones. And the Moldova that I visited uh, a couple of times and I, I was an um, observator for the elections, they are a strong uh, pro-Russian parties and there is the people speak all uh, Russian and uh, well, this could be, and also there is the Transnistria uh, region, uh, which is in a state. So I think it's, uh, this is, can be uh, going uh, worse. Uh, of course, now, again, the total solidarity to, to Ukraine, I hope that this will be solved. I don't know how, uh, but uh, for sure, this is the, the now is the, the, the most urgent, a, a more uh, painful situation. But thinking further, I think we have to, uh, think uh, to the other uh, to the other countries, and no, I don't know if the uh, only the NATO umbrella could be the solution. I think the diplomatic political uh, standing of the Europe should be in place more and more. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, also, because your speech opened uh, the discussion beyond the, <laughs> the borders, both of the European Union and Ukraine. Um, I, I just want to tell you, uh, but also to the others and those who are listening and will listen on YouTube, the appeal Ukraine now, as it is conceived, as a clear mention to the fact that this will be a first step for a larger European Union for the East and Southeast. Mm. Uh, so I think this is, of course, something that we should leverage also in the way how we advocate with the appeal and how we campaign with the appeal. We got the translation in Albanian mm. uh, and some of the signatories so far are also from Albania. And I think, uh, I mean, we are a very self-organized movement. So <laughs> we, do, we do what we can do, but if you have any um, contact from your previous experiences of these uh, um, monitoring um, missions that you have made mm -hmm. or, or that you think can endorse the appeal and kind of on board. Now we are at, we are at this citizens level, but of course also um, the role of national states in the European Council on the 23rd of uh, June and everything that can be done in between. So your help in kind of finding uh, new networks of support is, uh, is very, very important. And we can discuss also other, other okay. uh, ideas, but thanks for the geopolitical yeah. Uh, overview that was very <laughs> no, so, thank you to you again uh, I'm reading that Michael needs to leave and we are a bit beyond our shadow but Sibylla has her hand raised so Sibylla mm -hmm. uh, floor is yours and then we close the meeting for tonight and I'll give you a bit of updates on next uh, uh, appointments I'm sorry if uh, if you are in a hurry I can uh, just close uh, what you prefer do you no, no 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 Okay, I completely agree what uh, with, uh, what uh, Marco was saying before. Uh, there is a completely difference between uh, the people that attacked and the people that defend his, uh, himself. Uh, I want to say that uh, the idea uh, that what what Flavia was to, uh, talking about is very important. Uh, we have a problem with the uh, with the rural law, uh, but the problem is that the citizen don't understand in which way the rural law um, fall on a political uh, um, structure of Europe. Uh, uh, and so what we can do 
what like citizens we can do about that. Uh, perhaps we can work on uh, to make this link uh, clear, clear. Uh, I don't know in which way, for, for example, using the weapon of information or uh, create a possibility for a C European citizen to discuss about, uh, to, to sit and uh, speak about uh, uh, in reality uh, this problem, because the 99% I'm sure that they don't know that uh, uh, when a new state uh, come, uh, can give all this uh, pressure to the, the, the decision of European. Uh, the other things is, uh, um, uh, that we cannot raise this problem now uh, when we speak about uh, Ukrainian, because uh, the situation is too dramatic and too urgent and so we cannot do this now, or, or, or we can speak about uh, uh, when we speak about Ukrainian, for me, because it is uh, too dramatic the situation that we see and we cannot uh, accept this now. Thank you, Sibylla. Um, so I think uh, this urgency that Sibylla raises is exactly the urgency that we need to have in keep promoting the appeal, even use it in a controversial manner if it's needed. I think this debate on the protection of the rule of law, the characteristics and the checklist of a country to join the rule of law, it's already helpful within the European Union itself to keep the, 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 um, the discussion alive and the search for mechanisms that are stronger and stronger. And as a movement, we have the freedom also to cover the different aspects and try to impact at the at the different levels. So um, let's keep the discussion open. Uh, maybe with Lorenzo, we will put on Human Sagora a summary of what we discussed tonight so that we have a open line of uh, thinking and uh, uh, analyzing and developing the initiatives that we can carry on. Um, I also want to remind us that uh, with Malco, we selected and uh, get the approval of the 10 members of the Administrative Board of Humans. Uh, as the, the list is already on the website, but uh, you will receive an official email on that, uh, like all the Humans members and activists. And we are aiming to have the first meeting of the board, uh, which is gonna be, of course, open to the others to, to attend, uh, probably on the 29th of April, but we will confirm it next week. And uh, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we will follow up uh, uh, next week, but I just want to read a message that we just got from D Diana. Hello, my name is Diana and I'm from Ukraine, next to Bucha. I participated in the video appeal initiated by Andrid. I want to thank you for your support and willingness to help us through this difficult time. I believe that very soon we will become a real, a real European family. Thank you very much for not being silent. Uh, thank you, Diana, for joining your voice, the voice with Andre, and for creating this uh, thing together. Uh, there, was no, there is no best way to close this meeting then. And uh, we we'll follow up uh, Humans Meet every Thursday at 7 p.m., but there is plenty of channels to keep this moving. And uh, happy holidays. Uh, and uh, see you soon. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Thank Ciao. you. Ciao. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao.